Okay, so Junior Roberts here coming to you with real juniorroberts.com and in this video we're going to be looking at how to plot any graph in physics right so let's go right into it okay so quickly our learning objectives in this video will be to look at what we need to know in order to plot graphs in physics and we're going to be looking at four key things that you must know in order to plot graphs in physics right and knowing these things will give you an opportunity to have a favorable experience when you go about plotting graphs okay so the first thing that we will look at is uh, the fact that we have to use a sharp dark pencil to plot graphs so what we're saying is there that whenever we plot graphs we always want to use a sharp dark pencil right and that gives us an opportunity to draw very neat thin and bright lines when we actually plot our graphs right because whenever we plot graphs in physics it is very important that we make those graphs neat as possible and using a sharp dark pencil gives you the best opportunity of producing neat graphs okay so the next thing that we're going to look at is what goes on each of the axes right because many times we will be given data to plot and we have to determine what will go on the y-axis and what will go on the x-axis so when we're asked to plot a graph right we will often be told what data we are plot right but oftentimes we will not be told what we're to plot on the y-axis and what we're to plot on the x-axis as a matter of fact we're not going to be told uh, what to plot on the y-axis and what to plot on the x-axis explicitly right however based on how the statement is written we can actually determine what will go on the y-axis and what will go on the x-axis and we're going to be discussing that shortly so here we have an example where we say plot a graph of force f against extension x right so in this statement we're not explicitly told what to plot on the y-axis and what to plot on the x-axis so how now are we able to determine what goes on the y and what goes on the x so here we say now that the quantity that comes first in the statement will always go on the y-axis right so we are told to plot a graph of force f against extension x so using this statement here that whatever quantity comes first will go on the y we will see that in our example here force will go on the y-axis while extension will go on the x-axis right so whatever statement you're given right to plot anything right whatever comes first will go on the y-axis and whatever comes last will go on the x-axis so now another thing that we have to pay attention to is choosing a suitable scale right so many students struggle with determining what scale they are to use so here we're saying that we want to choose a scale that is reasonable and will cover at least 50 percent of the graph paper right now in my own experience right ideally right i would suggest that you aim for about 75 percent of the graph paper right because that will give you a graph that is large enough for you to do whatever analysis that you need to do in a very convenient ma manner right so anywhere between 50 and 75 percent is okay right when choosing a suitable scale now the most challenging thing about choosing a scale is determine how the values should increment by so we're going to discuss that shortly so whenever we're choosing a suitable scale we want to choose also a suitable scale ratio right so the scale ratio is essentially how much you want to increment by on each axis so here we're saying that we will choose scale ratios such as one centimeter to one unit one centimeter to two units or one centimeter to five units now in some cases we might be required to plot 
decimals or we might be required to plot very large numbers so in those cases we might have to use decimal or multiple ratios of these three examples here so let's look at some of those decimal or multiple ratios so for example we could have one centimeter to 0 0.1 one centimeter to 0 0.2 or one centimeter to 0 0.5 if we're plotting decimals while on the other hand if we're plotting large numbers right we can choose one centimeter to 10 one centimeter to 20 or one centimeter to 50 depending on the values that we are plotting right so we see that this is our decimal ratio and this here is our multiple ratio so again when choosing our scale ratio we want to choose reasonable ratios to ensure that our graph is plot nicely and you can actually plot your points very easily so you want to choose these ratios one to one one to two or one to five or decimal or multiples of those so the next thing that students have a challenge with is how to determine the best fit line so first of all we have to ask ourselves what is the best fit line or the line of best fit so we're saying here that the line of best fit is merely the line that shows the best average of all the plotted points right so when you plot your points you're going to draw a best fit straight line that shows the best average of all the points and the idea of the best fit line is that since it shows the best average of all the points it is assumed that if you were to find let us say the gradient of that line right and you find the average of all the data on the y-axis and all the data on the x-axis and you divide them your gradient will be equal to that average so our best fit line will pass through as many points as possible and it will also show an even distribution of points on both sides of that line all right so let's look at an example here so let us say we have uh, an axis so this is our axis our y-axis and our x-axis and let us say we have some points plotted these are our points plotted like this right now as you notice these points are slightly scattered right now what we are required to do is to draw a line of best fit so let's draw a line like this so if we look at this line right here we see that this line passes through uh, it passes through this point it passes through the first two points and it passes through the first two points here it almost passed through this one and it almost passed through this one so we see that it actually passes through as many points as possible and if you also look closely you see that we have an even distribution of points about the line so we have two points on this side and we have two points on this side so therefore we could consider this as our best fit line now in some cases i see where students might choose to draw a line like this as their best fit line right because i'm seeing where students sometimes have the misconception that the best fit line must pass through the origin right and that is not so the best fit line is always a line that shows the best average of all the points so if we look at these two points right here we will see that our the, we will see that the dark colored line is our best fit line because it shows the best average of all the points and as you can see it passes through as many points as possible and it shows an even distribution of points about the line so that's what we need to be aware of when you look at our best fit line and also if you look at the red line here we see where it passes through about two points one point here and one point here but if you look at the distribution of the points we have one two three points on this side while we have one point on this side so therefore the red line will not be our best fit line so let's just quickly wrap what we would have learned just now so a couple of things that we learned is that we want to always use a sharp dark pencil to plot graphs in physics 
and that is the enable neatness and the quantity that appears first in the statement is always plotted on the y-axis right also we would have learned that we want to choose a reasonable and suitable scale when scaling the graph and we're going to use ratios such as 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 5 or decimal or multiples of those and then finally we learned that the line of best fit is the line that shows the best average of all the plotted points okay so this was junior roberts coming to you with real juniorroberts.com if there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on please post it below in comments and i'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you if you're currently studying physics and find that you're struggling to understand certain key topics then register for my live interactive csec physics classes the full details for those classes will be posted below in the comments like this video if it was helpful and thank you for watching